ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to ramco systems q4 and fi 2023 24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded and now hand the conference over to mr anmol garg from dam capital advisors thank you and over to you sir thank you nira good uh, good evening everyone on behalf of dam capital we welcome you all to q4 fy24 conference call of ramco systems we have with us mr abhinav raja full time director mr subramanian ceo of the company uh, mr sandesh bilagi chief operating officer mr r ravi kula chandran cfo ms gaitri vp finance and mr vijay raghavan company secretary i'll now hand over the call to mr abhinav for his opening remarks thank you and over to you sir good evening and thank you everyone for joining the q4 s24 earnings call as you might have already read we announced our financial results last evening and we'll go over the results and highlights on the call today we reported a revenue of usd 63.92 million dollars and the global consolidated income of ramco systems limited was 64.41 million dollars or about 529.9 crores rupees in the past few quarters we've been indicating that we'll take all our efforts to get the company back to ebitda uh, profit and positive and consistently improve the bottom line from there and we're happy to say that in this quarter we have turned ebitda positive and we will aim to also maintain it the coming year our emphasis on innovation is helping us build transformation and drive future growth one of the significant milestones this quarter and year was the launch of ramco pace it's a modern saas based platform which is gaining good traction and showing promise in various markets till date we've had over 13 events across india uh, asia um, australia new zealand middle east where ramco has been ramco pace has been demoed uh, to several customers and prospects and we've received the tremendous response and a lot of demo requests to this this is a testament of ramco's commitment to innovation and excellence in payroll additionally we've also secured a record multi million dollar deal uh, which is one of the largest deals in the history of ramco systems signed uh, with korean air this strategic engagement will accelerate tech transformation of korean air's new engine maintenance facility which would be asia's largest engine mro facility our commitment is to bring in uh, rapid technology modernization across all our offerings to ensure we have the best in class design enterprise apps with the best user interface embedded with uh, generative ai along with a rich uh, uh, feature set as well ramco focuses on offering an enhanced uh, scalable and stable platform thereby aiming to ensure there's good client satisfaction and good business agility as well With this brief background, I'll hand it over to Sundar to walk you through further details. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Abhinav. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining this call. Uh, let me quickly take you through the company's performance over the quarter and the year. As Abhinav already mentioned, the revenue stood at about sixty-three point nine two million dollars, and also we turned a bit of positive uh, uh, last quarter. Uh, despite challenges and headwinds our recurring revenue grew at a healthy pace of 13% year over year compared to 5% last year q4 witnessed a 19% year over year increase in order booking from usd 23.41 million to us dollars 27.9 million this year our unexecuted order book stood at a healthy 188 million giving us a good start to the next year Our cloud orders, that are primarily subscription-based SaaS solutions, continue to grow at healthy pace, a healthy pace, and with a 60% revenue record from the cloud or SaaS customers. Uh, this really forms a part of our recurring revenue. We signed 11 deals over the year, over million dollars, and in Q4 we added, uh, as we mentioned before, the Korean Air deal, which is a very large deal for us. on partnership and alliances front the year witnessed on the onboarding of deloitte and video as a key strategic partner to redefine the pay- payroll landscape and we work, we continue to work with them very closely looking in looking getting into the market 
our turnaround efforts are underway and we are beginning to see positive signs of, of progress. Uh, EBITDA turning positive is one such. Our strategic direction will remain focused on platform modernization and transformation. With our rich and extensive IP and the power of SaaS enabled platform, we continue to offer cutting edge technologies and swift deployment, thereby delivering excellence. In closing, I want to mention that our uh, customer centricity, our focus on operational excellence, and the new product line, such as space, will bode well for the future. We are confident that our growth plans and strategic directions drive significant value for our uh, stakeholders. And thank you for your continued support. Uh, I have nothing else to say. We welcome your questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. <coughs> Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, you will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manan Palladia from MKP Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. So, first of all, uh, congratulations on turning EBITDA positive. Uh, so, my first question is with regards to the Air Korea order that you've gotten. You said it's our biggest order uh, in one of the history, and you said it's a couple of million dollars. I know you usually don't give numbers, but if you could indicate as to whether it is a sub $5 million order or north of $5 million. Secondly, if you could also indicate what sort of timeline would we see this revenue trickling in or something of that sort, just so that we can get a sense of how MRO orders will work in the future. See, Korea is, uh, we said it's the largest order. It is to the north of $10 million. Let's put it that way. We don't want to give an exact number. We don't give, but when you see it's a large deal, it's not a 10 million. But again, that is not indicative of all the MRO orders, right? It depends on what kind of uh, the product implementation that we uh, contract do. So this is fairly large and uh, this is not a 10 million. Right. And the execution timeline, if you could give us a sense of how do that revenue should trickle in. Yeah, typically, our execution timelines, including the AMCs, would really uh, be, we'll be looking at five to seven years. Uh, that would be the indicated timeline. And that would be front-ended, right? Like, I'm assuming the first two years would be maybe 40% and then 15-20% uh, going forward later on, or something of that sort? It is kind of it is structured in a very similar way, but not exactly with those numbers. Right, fair enough. Uh, I understand that. Uh, also, sir, secondly, uh, we've launched Space recently. Congratulations on that. Uh, my question is, ha have we been seeing a lot of uh, traction in Space? I know it's only been maybe two, two and a half months or so since we've launched it. But uh, what sort of traction have we been seeing? Anything on that end? So in, in terms of, uh, you know, there are definitely two parts to it. Right now we are doing the road shows. And we have done close to around uh, nine road shows across the world including two in India, we have done it in Australia, New Zealand, uh, no, actually 13 plus, even yesterday we had completed one. So many roadshows. The, 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 it has been received very well by the participants, and in fact, the number of demo requests have been significantly high. And uh, so that is a very clear indicator of uh, the future of space. Uh, the amount of interest and the amount of, uh, the kind of, uh, the feedback that we have really got from those events have been phenomenal. So, but it has to convert into the deal. So, right now there is a very active interest in demos, and we are doing those demos to the customers at this point of time. What we could have done over a period of two years in terms of active marketing and selling uh, those kind of demo requests, we have got this in this uh, road through event because of the superiority of the product. And just to add, I think um, these uh, conversations, given that we deal with uh, mid to large scale enterprises, typically it takes uh, two to three quarters before it transitions from demo to possibly, you know, uh, order orders and then revenue is there. So you'll only start to see this post stage two. Right. Uh, so thank you for your answer on that. Uh, just one last question. Uh, coming back to the MRO end of things, 
now that you've received such a large order from a flag carrier and a national carrier etc and it's a it seems fairly large i'm assuming by your size uh, if you could just give me a sense of uh, are we seeing more traction in terms of mr orders now that we've landed such a big client like is that working in terms of the advertising benefit that we get from having such a large carrier on our client uh, client and list yeah i think it is a both yes and no question the reason is that see if you look at a payroll market payroll is a very horizontal market so which means that we can you know any any customer in any industry is actually our customer prospect right that is something we can always do but where is the uh, airline airline mro right particularly in indian mro and air freight mro are very niche fields so not that there are too many operators there but we have seen a lot of active interest it is based on the solution that we have at this point of time so we do see an active interest i think the market potential is pretty good but the number of uh, opportunities that we are chasing are few and they are uh, and they look pretty good right thank you sir i'll get back in the queue thank you so much thank you thank you very much par seven jima press car and one to ask the question next question is from line of dhananjay vagrodia from ask investment manager please go ahead uh hi uh, hi management thanks for this opportunity uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you can you speak through your handset and a little louder please sure hi uh said so, uh, thank you for this opportunity uh so what i gather from the channels is that you all have now revamped your product you all have done the hard work of now getting the product up to date uh so how are we seeing a in traction i know it'll take time but how are we seeing traction and would that be something where we would see fixed cost be similar let's say this year and next year but the uh j curve hockey sticks uh, growth which we will see with um, more customers that would be significant for us is that something we're looking at that that is something that we are expecting uh, at this point of time uh, but the rumor is that we are in very initial stages and uh, as as we told the road shows were very good 13 performance went very well the demo requests have been very good a btb cycle is typically 6 to 9 months for somebody to decide so by the end of maybe the next quarter or possibly into the h2 uh, we will get to know what kind of uh, traction that we will have in the market with this speed you know that is uh, number 1 but in terms of fixed cost we have done multiple things one is that you have seen our ebitda getting positive uh, because we have we have reduced a lot of the cost that we really have that is number one and second thing is that by onboarding partners like video and deloitte uh, we are also looking at uh, primarily how do we really expand our market how do we go a reach to more customers without really adding more sales and marketing to our effort so that is also working pretty well and uh, but we will see the real momentum going uh, into the q3 of the year so so uh, coming to that uh, just to understand now with uh, the likes of bdo and who done a contract with how does the contract work in terms of uh, sales expense cuz uh, is it do we do a profit share with them is it a revenue share or do we book it up, up on our cost how does it work so it is more a very a very simple contracting model because they provide services to their end customers and they do have contract with end customers and we have their price point to video or deloitte that is one model the second model is that you know we we provide it we provide services to the end customer and in the countries where we don't have a presence they provide services so it is a very transparent model and very simple model it's not too complicated by any means fantastic and uh, lastly uh, how is our sales force been in terms of now revamping them with uh, the new product as that all trading been done do we have any more additional expenses on that part we will have additional expenses we have provided for additional expenses but again with our partnerships on the road shows i, I think we have a hugely optimized external cost with respect to that so to that extent what we have done is that we have spent we have spent what is really necessary but we have really expanded our market presence okay. and we we'll also be very selective in terms of which markets we we'll add more sales folks as well uh, we don't want to expand to aggressively to new areas because we think the depth is quite large in, in our existing markets itself um the overall payroll market is over 50 billion dollars globally right uh, we are still uh, you know very small company compared to the whole size so Uh, we will first uh, ensure that the first 12 to 18 months we get good traction in the existing market and then we can always 
explore new territories for the growth. So to answer your question about when can more aggressive growth come from, I would say I think we're part of the since we're in the turnaround journey as well right now, uh, I would say it will still take another uh, 12 to 18 months to expect any accelerated growth. Right now, it's all about uh, EBITDA and cash control, making sure that we remain profitable as a company. Uh, fantastic, uh, lovely to hear, reassuring to hear, and congratulations on a very, very good product. Your channels have been uh, praising it very highly, so congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vivek Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Can I audible, sir? Yes. Hello. Sir, my question is on this, uh, this uh, MRO deal. So, uh, if you take away that deal, can you maintain? So, what are the basic traction that you think you can maintain in this defense thing? Also, one year back, uh, we were told that uh, there are defense opportunities uh, in US. So, if you can. Uh, do some commentary on these two things, like our uh, order gaining traction in defense, where are we seeing opportunities in air, aerospace and defense, and U.S. defense opportunities in these two things. Because there's such a big order is to take that away, how is that traction? Yes. Uh, we, last uh, uh, quarter, we had already, that time, we said that it is the focus for, we were uh, into the heavy segment, which is the smaller segment, and we are pouring into MRO, and as well as the defense related area. And that was the guidance we had given and from the uh, defense usually takes a very long gestation period. That time also it's around 18 to 24 months what we are seeing. And right now, uh, uh, MRO has uh, uh, moved faster than uh, other because this is in the non uh, uh, defense area. So uh, this has continued and probably uh, more of the opportunities what we are seeing, serious ones are in the uh, MRO area, and we will see how uh, our defense uh, strategy works out. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the other deal which we had uh, uh, um, uh, announced at that time, uh, General Atomic, it is uh, uh, gone live as per the plan. So that is the one uh, color I can give. So we are uh, uh, see how it progresses. You are still positive on US defense because you have invested fairly there. So I'm just happy. We have uh, not uh, significant investment. It is the, uh, you know, we had our office and subsidiary which we have created from the structural perspective rather, not from the uh, lot of investment we have not uh, put there. Uh, uh, but we knew it is going to be taking long term uh, and we are just, you know, seeing that. And it's also seasonal, the spending coming from the government and other multiple factors which will uh, uh, determine that. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, currently, as we stand, we are more bullish on the uh, MRO side. Yeah. And, and also, one other thing to add is that uh, we have the same product that can cater to different segments. We, we don't have to go and build it again. So, so if you have an engine MRO that can really cater to uh, the civilian structure, that can cater to the government structure, so our product is that robust. So that is the power of the product. So, so at, at this point of time, wherever we are seeing opportunities, we are pursuing those opportunities aggressively. And while we pursue all these opportunities aggressively, what can really help us uh, in terms of uh, refining and uh, making our product more rich. So that is what we are really looking at. So, so if I can take a two to three year view, what are the products you think will drive our order booking and sales, and which are finding traction, which markets and so, products do you think are going to drive? Yeah, as, a, as, a, as an organization, right, and since we are in, uh, as Abhinav mentioned, we are in the turnaround process, and turnaround journey takes time. Uh, but having said that, we are not really uh, focusing on the market as uh, absolutely payroll is number one, because payroll is uh, a large market for us, and in terms of it's a very horizontal market, and we are present in that market, and we see an opportunity to grow. So that is undiluted focus, that is number one. The second one is that in, the, in with respect to the aviation, wherever we are in Kelly, that can be really rolled out in other countries. Kelly is there. And the MRO is an opportunity. This is a very niche product we have in this segment. We have built this product already. Um, it will be long sometime pretty soon. And, but the point is that we will focus on this. So we keep, as an organization, we keep our focus on uh, these two uh, industry verticals. But having said that, there are other industry verticals also we have present. So where we are doing what we said in our script, primarily we are looking at the modernization, while we could keep modernization, modernizing the other pieces, other products that we have. 
so i would say that these two are very high focus and while all the all other things are getting more modernized and refined so that's how we really look at it we don't want to really focus on too many things at the same point of time okay thank you thank you uh, thank you participants you may press star and one to ask a question next question is from the line of harsh mochanan from chris portfolio please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh, wanted to understand uh, you know this year where do we target in terms of execution of uh, the order book and um, can we expect the ebitda to reach uh, double digit again this year or it could take longer we don't want to get uh, or we don't want to make any forward looking statements and we are very cautious at this point of time because it is also a year of turnaround we want to make sure we make all the investments we continue to deliver excellence to the customer we continue to modernize the product so we think we will stay a bit of positive but uh, beyond that we don't think we can really give any uh, forward looking statements okay okay and also wanted to understand uh, between the stand alone and consolidated numbers uh, you know there was a good growth on the stand alone business and um, uh, overall numbers were flattish at a consolidated level so some is there something which has moved between the businesses and uh, if you could help us understand what is uh, driving the stand alone number more than the consolidated number <clears throat> the stand alone number uh, consider the intercompany transactions uh, between the subsidiaries parent company subsidiary we charge them for the work done being done from chennai on the offshore basis so that will make a difference between the consolidated number and the stand alone number but it is better, it's a better view to see everything is a consolidated because they are not very independent from that perspective so our business is interlink all over so uh, better way to look into the result will be the consolidated one okay okay fair and just last one more question uh, we closed the year uh, uh, at almost more than 500 crores of top line so out of this uh, i just um, said 60% of the revenue was tax related so is it on uh, the entire top line or some subset of this top line for the year in a piece with the so out of out of 526 crores top line what what revenue is recurring in terms of your saas revenue led uh, revenue and what is the implementation or one time uh, revenue split yeah it is mostly from whatever we get that 60% is from the cloud orders which could be in implementation it could be in the subscription it could be lot of things it's based on the cloud based uh, deals that we really uh, go to the market with so it is from that and that you are seeing a steadily increasing pattern and for the subscription if you want to really look at it you have to look at it up in terms of the amc or subscription back which is also showing a steady healthy growth the recurring revenue is showing a steady healthy growth the crowd orders are also showing a healthy growth yeah recurring order if you see in our fact sheet recurring revenue what we have given it is pure recurring revenue it doesn't include any services there. yeah and our fact sheet is about 320 crores the recurring revenue is 320 crores you want to correct the Okay. Okay. So three. So out of five twenty six, three twenty crores is recurring revenue. That that understanding is correct, right? Yes. 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 Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Viraj Mithani from Jupira Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is regarding this. Uh, Coordinate order which is up for a ten million. Can you tell me what what will be what has changed after that and what will be positive for us after this? We are more in terms we are more visible to the other big airlines in terms of MRO. Yeah, I, I, I think that. yeah. Yes, so I I think if you really look at it, it is one of the uh, largest airlines in the world and it is very reputed. and when they and they made a selection based on a complete due diligence they spent a lot of time with us they made the due diligence they they played around with the product they made sure that it was robust and after that has been chosen 
So when the when someone like Korean Air chooses us, and uh, it uh, gives a extra credibility in the market. So other people who are really looking at it will absolutely look at our product because it has been chosen by uh, someone like Korean Air. So so that that has made a very big difference. Right now we are focused on uh, executing it. So so that is our immediate focus in that uh, right now. And sir, uh, are there any? Performance benchmark on that order. I suppose if you are not able to do it, the order would be cancelled or reduced or something like that. No, I, I think we we do have SLAs and they have a SLAs in terms of how to really help. It is a good contract that we really uh, went to them with with all the necessary clauses. We have made sure that the one area that we have really improved as part of the turnaround is to have the right contractual clauses, and that is something that we have really tightened. And we are pretty confident about our delivery because this is based because they have come and they have played around with our product and uh, and uh, they they were satisfied and that's how we got the order. So I don't think there is uh, any issue out there. But having said that, you know, we as an as an industry as a company we are always paranoid. So we'll make sure that we deliver it extremely well. Okay, and that's very nice too. So uh, and how is this order structured like? Uh... It'll be executed over what period of time? You said five to seven years. So Viraj, sorry to interrupt you. Your voice is not coming clear. Okay, am I clear now? Hello. Yeah, can you speak something? I'm clear now. Am I clear now? Yeah, a little better. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how will this order be executed? Like, uh, can you explain me the? Execution of this order, like it would be the SaaS income, then AMCs, or how? As a layman, if you can explain to me. We yes, explained it earlier. We yeah. all uh, on this call. However, in the normal contract, like license sale and then the implementation, then we get into uh, yeah. AMC. So uh, nothing different from any other. We just uh, uh, answered some previous callers on the same. Uh, yeah. So it is like 20%, 40%, 40%, 40 and then the AMC. Is it? This is the way to look at the order? Look, at, we do not like to go into further detail on that one. I think it was a, um, uh, you know, uh, customer contracts we don't discuss, but it is the uh, usual norm, whatever was there. I think it is in the similar, you know, uh, what we said, uh, you know, in previous uh, response to the usual norm. And uh, so this is uh, another question, the last question from my side. Since we have done a bit of positive this year, at what level of order inflow will be bad positive? Like, just your sense on it. I won't hold you on it. Just, it is a layman for me to understand the company. So it, it, see, the, right now the turnaround uh, is underway, and we are seeing green fruits at this point of time. Uh, we have seen some good wins, good contracts, and EBITDA has become positive. Uh, a lot of good things are happening. But we are not able to answer your question when it will get bad positive at this point of time. Maybe sometime by end of this year, we will be able to answer that. Right now, we are not ready to answer. Okay, so all the best from my side and all the best to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from, sorry. Next follow-up question is from the line of Manan Polaria from MKP Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, hi sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So uh, my understanding, basis our last couple of calls has always been that uh, revenue uh, expense reduction has also been a part of our turnaround strategy, and I think we've done quite well on that side. We've come down to 130 or so or so of run rate. Uh, my first question is an accounting question related to that. Is that the sort of run rate we should pencil in for the next 4, 8, 12 quarters? I think you, you can take that as a guideline. There is a uh, you know, uh, baseline uh, run rate for the expenses if you are asking. Yes, you can consider that. Oh, could you give me a mix of what percentage of that is fixed and variable? Mm. No, we don't want to get into that at this point, but you can take the overall cost to be there. Right. Uh, so my second question is on something that one of the previous gentlemen asked with regards to about 320 out crore being the recurring book and 520 out crore being the uh, implementation, et cetera, one of revenues. Uh, given that we already have, I think, 188 million order book, is it? Yes. 
could is it possible to say that uh, the uh, mix of subscription as well as uh, one of avenue nexus since we already have that uh, order book available with us is it fair to give some sort of forecast with respect to mix and how much we will grow no we don't want them to get into the forecasting this is because it depends on lot of things uh, but what we would say is that our order book is healthy and many of the customers we have one of the multi country deals it depends on where the deals pan out where the implementation pan out uh, you know at, based on the customers uh, how they are working so we would not like into getting into the forecasting thing but all we can say is that our order book is pretty healthy and our teams are busy in getting those orders right so that great to hear just one last question if you have any internal targets of at what pace you would like to grow i am not saying this is a forecast or anything if you could just give me whatever you internally uh, feel and what you target for your team yeah that's that's why it is internal we can't really disclose it but absolutely please believe me we are very target oriented company we have targets for everything so we are that part of the turnaround right how can you have a turnaround without a target so we have that but it's i can't really disclose it unfortunately no sir i understand not at all into two three things here i think sundar said clearly look into the healthy order book recurring revenue and ebit are positive you know you link all these things you will know what we are saying right sir i understand thank you thank you very much a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question as there are no further questions i will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you all for joining uh, the q4 call of ramco systems um, i hope you got a decent sense uh, of our numbers as we have mentioned earlier this is a year of uh, of transformation for us uh, so our main focus will be on executing uh, the orders that we have in hand well making sure that customer satisfaction continues to improve making sure that we also maintain ebitda positive uh, and more importantly also ensure that the new products that we have launched gain good traction in the market as well so uh, we look forward to giving you more exciting updates in the coming quarters but thanks for patiently listening and joining the call have a good day thank you very much on behalf of tam capital advisors that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you